Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about uh, flow models that we'll use uh, to eventually uh, derive our governing equations, governing conservation equations. Um, we're, the governing equations that we're going to want to derive are the conservation of uh, mass, uh, which is also called the con continuity equation, and then the second one is the conservation of momentum, um, which is derived based off of Newton's second law, and then the third one is going to be the energy equation, based off of the conservation of energy principle. So there are four flow models that we can use that I've written on the board here. Um, two of them are from the perspective of, fi of a finite control volume, and two of them are from the perspective of an infinite infinitesimal fluid element. So starting over here on the finite control volume, um, we can either have a finite control volume that is stationary in the flow, such that particles are moving through the volume and it's fixed in space, or we can have it uh, moving with the flow so that there's always the particles that are inside this volume are always going to be in the volume as it moves with the flow, which means that the volume can actually change, uh, it'll actually change size uh, as it moves along to, in order to contain those particles. Um, the same is, the same two ways to derive this are also in the infinitesimal fluid element, where one of them you have the fluid element is fixed in space and the other one is moving along a streamline. Um, the infinitesimal fluid element is small in the sense of um, when you're taking derivatives, but it's, it contains enough molecules such that it can still be considered a continuum. You run into these other issues when you're deriving these equations if you don't assume a continuum, uh, which I might talk about uh, later. So looking at these two in the finite control volume uh, methods, um, whichever way you do this, you end up uh, from the physical principle, you're not deriving uh, the equations in integral form. And then if you use the infinitesimal fluid element, you end up deriving them in partial differential equation form. So, uh, let me just go through this and I'll go back and explain why. Uh, for the stationary in the flow, for both of the fixed in spaces, uh, you end up deriving something called the conservative form, which is really only used in CFD. Um, and then for the moving with the flow or moving along the streamline, uh, you generate a non-conservative form. Uh, I'm going to need to derive the equations before I go into why those really matter. Um, so that'll be a video after I think I go through and derive uh, the continuity, momentum, and the energy equations. Uh, but for now, it's good enough to just know that which method generates which kind of form uh, in either the integral, partial differential, and then conservative, non-conservative uh, forms. So. One of the, just briefly, one of the reasons why integral form is nice uh, is that the integral form does not require that the, uh, it doesn't require that there's mathematical continuity um, in the flow, while the partial differential equation form uh, requires continuity in the flow. So you might be asking why that would make a difference, and it comes into play when you're, one of the reasons is when you're dealing with shock waves, which are essentially discontinuities in your flow, it's nice to have the integral equation, the integral form, um, so you don't have to deal with, there's other methods you can deal with shock waves and the PDE form, but it's nice to have the integral form. And another reason is when we go through finite volume, um, the finite volume method, that's based off of the integral form. Um, so those are just, this is just an overview of the models that we use to derive the governing equations. Um, so you might want to refer back to this when we're going through the actual derivations and I use some of these terms. Um, Alright, well thank you for watching.